Hello, everyone. How are you? Hi. Look at that flag. <laughs> How are you? First meet and greet after dinner. Uh, let's not waste any time. Didn't you have dinner? You should have. But you have energy to ask questions, I hope. So, ladies and gentlemen, Ermal and Fabrizio, Italia, Italy. <laughs> Suona adesso, il sole sulla rambla, oggi non è lo stesso, in Francia c'è un concerto, la gente si diverte, qualcuno canta forte, qualcuno grida a morte, a Londra piove sempre, ma oggi non fa male, il cielo non fa sconti neanche un funerale, a Nizza il mare rosso di fuochi e di vergogna, di gente sull'asfalto e sangue nella fogna. E questo corpo enorme che noi chiamiamo terra, ferito nei suoi organi dall'Asia all'Inghilterra, galassie di persone disperse nello spazio, ma quello più importante è lo spazio di un abbraccio. Di madri senza figli, di figli senza padri Di volti illuminati come muri senza quadri Minuti di silenzio spezzati da una voce Non mi avete fatto niente Non mi avete fatto niente Non mi avete tolto niente Questa è la mia vita che va avanti Oltre tutto, oltre la gente Non mi avete fatto niente Non avete avuto niente Perché tu C'è chi si fa la croce, chi prega sui tappeti, le chiese e le moschee, gli mamma e tutti i preti, ingressi separati della stessa casa, miliardi di persone che sperano in qualcosa. Braccia senza mani, facce senza nomi, scambiamoci la pelle in fondo siamo umani, perché la nostra vita non è un punto di vista e non esiste bomba pacifista. Non mi avete fatto niente. Hey, hi guys. Non mi avete tolto Fabrizio, you're welcome. Welcome to Lisbon, welcome to Portugal. Hello, hi, welcome. Welcome, Nicola. Uh, welcome. So, oh, why are you so far away? Oh, you're in the middle. Okay. You will be protected. So, Nicola, you, will you help me here with the introductions, please? Who do we have on stage? Hello, everyone. We have our two champions from Italy, Ermal Meta and Fabrizio Hello. Moro. Hello. Hello. Good evening. And of course, we have Alessandro Ragni from Sony Music and Eddie Anselmi, which is the vice uh, head of delegation and ultimately you, the me. The Italian head of delegation. Absolutely. So, so nice to have you here. You had your first year, so yeah. today, tonight, more or less. And I just want to, I want to talk about one thing because uh, you're here because you won Sanremo Festival. And Sanremo is kind of the cornerstone of Eurovision because Eurovision, the Eurovision format was inspired by Sanremo Festival. And Sanremo is really a big thing in Italy. So I think I will start with Fabrizio, because he's the oldest one. Actually, did you know Fabrizio? I just spoke with Amaya right, right now. She's the Spanish singer. She's the youngest one. You are the oldest singer in this year competition. You have, I knew it. <laughs> you have a responsibility. You have a responsibility. Yeah, you are. You are. So, I was doing some research about you and how many times did you compete in San Remo? Eh, ho perso il conto. Ho perso il conto. E sei volte. Sei, sei volte. Six? Sì. Yeah, Questa è la sesta volta. And you won. Six. And you won this year. Six times. But this year you won with Ermal. But last year you competed against each other. No, battagliato no, no, no. Battagliato mai. Ci siamo conosciuti l'anno scorso. There was no game. I ended yeah. him. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was not. A, it was not a battle. They just met each other. You, you met last year. That, that's when you, you met. And when yes. did you decide to participate in Sanremo? Quando avete deciso di partecipare Together. a Sanremo insieme? Abbiamo deciso innanzitutto di collaborare insieme. Perché eh, il Festival di Sanremo in questo progetto, in questa canzone, non mi avete fatto niente, non era previsto. So, uh, first of all, they decided to work together uh, and to write together. The idea of going to Sanremo was not there at the beginning when they decided to write this song together. Mm -hmm. 
poi una volta finito di arrangiare il brano di suonare il brano la voce che stavamo collaborando io e Dermani insieme è arrivata a Claudio Baglioni che è, il direttore, è stato il direttore artistico di questa ultima edizione di Sanremo che ci ha invitato a, e ci ha proposto quest'idea di partecipare e abbiamo accettato volentieri e meno male direi visto come è andata so when they actually finish composing and recording the song the rumor that they were working together arrived to the artistic director of Sanremo <laughs> Festival that decided to invite them and of course they accepted and they were very pleased to go yes uh, how many times did you try to did you compete in Sanremo as many as Fabrizio uh, well this year was the fifth time the five. fifth time oh yeah, just one times. less oh come on you're yeah. not that young I'm 37 yeah I'm 38 you're really younger. yeah you're younger than I am You look better than me. Oh, thank no, I don't. I'm tired. I just no, kidding. No, I know. <laughs> and actually, you won uh, an award. You both won this award in different years. The Mia Martini uh, Critics Award, I think that's the name. What's, what's this award about? Well, um, the, the, this award is very important because it's um, assigned by the, the journalists, by the critics. Mm -hmm. And uh, I won this critic last year with the Vietato Morire song. And uh, I arrived third in the competition. And it was a great honor for me because I, uh, I, I had done Sanremo, Sanremo Festival in the young category three times. And it was the first time for me in the big category. Yes. So I didn't expect that. I just. I just, well, my, my main goal was just to, to stand till the end of the song, because I was really emotional. emotional. So uh, I didn't expect that. It was very important for me, and uh, it, it gave me a lot of um, visibility with all the Italian audience. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, I, I was a songwriter, and I used to write songs for, for other singers, much more famous than me. And a lot of people used to sing my songs, but they didn't know it was me <laughs> writing them. But that's cool. And then uh, one day I, I, I was like, oh, I'm getting bored. I, I just want to go on stage. I used to go on the stage many years before I had a band, several bands, really. And, um, but, you know, I, I just wanted to hit the stage again. So I, I tried again. And this time I didn't fail. <laughs> and you're here. And I'm here. And you yeah. had your first rehearsal. How did it go? It's Fabrizio. Okay. Yeah. Very good. Very good. Very good? Yeah. Did you have yeah. fun on stage yeah. up there? Mi sono divertito soprattutto ci siamo rincontrati dopo un po' di tempo perché subito dopo la vittoria al Festival di Sanremo abbiamo iniziato a girare per incontrare i nostri fan in giro per l'Italia e non ci siamo più visti ad Erman. E in pratica ci siamo rincontrati qui, dopo il, con sì, vabbè, dopo il concerto al Forum di Assago, comunque siamo saliti nuovamente sul palco in questa occasione. It was a pleasure to be again together on a stage, ah, because actually after winning Sanremo they both went on a long uh, signing session tour across Italy, so they never had actually the chance to do the song again apart from a uh, few days ago at Ermal show in Milano at the Forum, And uh, so it was a great moment to do again this song here in Lisbon on that stage. And it's a nice stage. It's a cool stage. Oh, right. I yeah, like really. the stage. Now, your song, your song has a very strong message. When and why did you decide to write about this, to talk about this, to tell us this story? I go. You're the bosses. He's older. <laughs> <laughs> he is uh, inside many, 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 many old. Yeah. <laughs> you have the young spirit. <laughs> I'll turn inside out. <laughs> so, but wh uh, when and why did you decide to write about this? Because the message of your, strong, of, of, your strong, of your song is very strong. Um, What are you telling there? When we started our respective tour l'anno scorso. È successa una cosa, c'è stato un attentato a Manchester, al concerto di Ariana Grande. Yes. E... Uh, yeah, when actually they were 
touring last year, uh, all of a sudden, of course, there was this terrorist attack at the Arena Grande show in Manchester. Manchester. Una settimana dopo l'attentato, io iniziavo il mio tour a Roma. A week later, he was going to start his tour in Rome. E tanti, tanti fan. And a lot of fans. Mi hanno scritto. Wrote directly per to chiedermi, him on his socials. Per chiedermi se il concerto, il mio concerto, si sarebbe svolto ugualmente. To ask him if actually the show was going to happen or not. E quali misure cautelative erano in corso. And if any security was of course in place. Yes. I ragazzi avevano paura. Avvertivano Everybody paura. Everybody had fear. E la stessa cosa è successa anche ad Ermal. Same thing happened to Ermal. Ci siamo confrontati e abbiamo deciso di scrivere questa, questa canzone. So they, they had a call, they chat about it, per and they decided to write this song to say... Per promuovere il coraggio. To promote courage. Per non avere paura, soprattutto durante questi eventi così importanti. Not to have fear, especially when you gather for such beautiful and important events, like a concert, Eurovision, and many it, it others. Is a good, it is a good message. Oh, I'm tired, I'm mumbling. Um, I have lots of questions to ask you, but it's their time now, so who wants to go first? You please. You'll be the second, I promise. Hi, I'm Farouk from France, from Cocorico Vision magazine. Congratulations for your first rehearsal. Um, we, the lyrics are incrustated on the screen. Was it important for you that people understand the song in every country? And in how many languages did you put the lyrics on the screen? Well, it's very important for us uh, that, that people understand what we are singing about. Uh, this song is not just a song, it, it's a dance against the fear. But you can dance with the words too. And we didn't want to translate this song and sing it in another language. Because when you translate something, you lose something. Because every single world is culture grounded what you are singing, what we are saying. And the uh, Italian language is really uh, powerful in melody, especially in this case. But we don't want it to lose uh, the main spirit of this song, the lyrics, the meaning of it. So we decided to, to have this uh, multilingual overlays in order to, to make it understandable to anyone, to just to to get the, to make people get the right feeling to connect with them, it's really important. That we have no choreographies, no special dancers or players on the stage. Just the two of us, and uh, I think that is enough for this song. But the lyrics, you know, it's vital. Thank you. Yes, please. Oh, no, I told you, oh, you don't want to ask anymore? I promised her. Sorry. And I'm a gentleman, you know. How are you? Thank you. I'm from Italy. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> I'm sorry, I cannot speak Italian because, you know... Uh, oh, can you stand up? Just, yes. Thank you very, okay. very much. Um, we're proud of you. I'm proud of your song. Every time I hear it, from the first time in Sanremo, I felt so emotional. And today I felt emotion, emotional the same way. It's a wonderful message. The, the message I always thought should be given. Uh, what are your feelings in delivering this message? Uh, how do you feel in delivering this message to the whole world? Who wants to answer? Fabrizio, Ermal? The other one. <laughs> <laughs> È una canzone che ha un significato molto più profondo per noi. Ogni, a song that has a much for us. ogni volta che eh, cantiamo, mi permetto di parlare anche per, per Ermal, perché ci siamo confrontati fin da subito su alcune, su, sulla nostra provenienza. Every time we sing it together and uh, allow myself to speak also for, uh, for Elmer because we talked about it many times. 
ogni volta che cantiamo non mi avete fatto niente non pensiamo soltanto alla ribellione e al coraggio che cerchiamo di infondere nelle persone when we sing this song together we not just think about courage and rebellion that we try to convey in the message to the people ma pensiamo a tutta la nostra vita but we think about all our life abbiamo avuto un'infanzia e un'adolescenza molto complicati sia io che Herman uh, we both had a, let's say a complicated uh, childhood uh, our life uh, has been complicated somehow in different ways e quindi ogni volta che urliamo non mi avete fatto niente è perché tante volte siamo caduti e tante volte abbiamo cercato di rialzarci sempre every time we sing you haven't done anything to us we really mean it because it happened in our life many times and we felt this feeling deeply in our life and so as a double deeper meaning questo è il vero significato della canzone and this is the true meaning of the song thank you very much yes now you thank you very much the mic time thank you honey hi guys alistair birch from eurofile um you were far from manchester when this event happened but the singer ariana grande was right in the middle of it so if ariana was watching the video of this press conference what would you tell her about your song well if uh, ariana was uh, looking at us now where would the, oh wow what could i say you went through something really different uh, difficult thing to to deal with and uh, i know it was so so hard so difficult so in inimaginable and um maybe a song it's it's not enough to talk about it but if uh if courage it's a long journey this is the the first step every long journey starts with a really small step and we wanted to do this Fabrizio before said that we had uh, difficult lives uh, difficult lives it's, it's true uh, every every time we sing this song we are facing our personal demons every one of us has one at least one and um it's the time to raise our heads because bad things can happen but the reaction must take place that's it thank you last thank question you. oh what should i do now come on you go sorry jp sorry they hate me already i don't know how to do this <laughs> I am from Poland, Poli po Simon Polish Radio Newsletter. First of all, uh, I will have three questions, if I may. Three? Uh, you cannot. No. You cannot the, the at all. The question about the lyrics, actually, it's about uh, the world which uh, gets back up with the smile of child. What were your dreams as, a, as kids, when you were kids? What you dream about? Uh, Fabrizio, your last name is Moro. Uh, is it connected with the late Prime Minister Moro uh, from Italy by accident? Uh, because actually he would, su would sweet to the lyrics of this song as well. And to the head of the legation, oh my God, why the price of tickets for San Remo are so expensive? <laughs> <laughs> you have to ask somebody that else. one you can answer. <laughs> oh, when I, oh, I had a lot of dreams when I was a child, but I, um, I remember just one. When you, when you are a kid, you dream a lot. But I think that you have to focus just on one dream. Actually, I had two dreams. Uh, the first one was to be happy. And uh, the second was music. I'm, uh, my mother, she used to play uh, violin. She, was a, she is actually a musician. She doesn't play anymore, but she's a really good musician. And uh, I, I started to love music. I learned to love music until I was three years old. And uh, everything I wanted was to, to sing and to play. I started playing piano when I was six. 
and uh, I've never seen something different in my in my life than music. When I was 14, the first day of my um, of the new school, uh, my my teacher, she she used to to call all the names of the guys and and girls and. Every everyone has to had to say its name and her name and, and then say what what he or she wanted to do uh, for um, when they grew older when we grew older and I said uh, I'm Armel Med I want to be a rock star and everybody laughed. <laughs> Actually, I was thinking about my dream. <laughs> I'm not a rock star now, but I'm I'm making up my days. <laughs> okay. Fabrizio. Eh, eh, nel mio cortile dove abitavo io, dove vivo io in Ro a Roma tutti i bambini giocavano a pallone il calcio è molto importante in Italia e tutti hanno il sogno di diventare calciatore so, uh, in my childhood where I grew up in Rome everybody was playing football all the kids and uh, football is very important in uh, our culture and everybody dreamed to become a football player of course and i you know you know not buono a giocare a pallone i wasn't that good <laughs> let's say <laughs> quindi cercavo qualcosa che mi potesse aiutare ad esprimermi so I was looking for something uh, different of course from football that could help me to express myself e allora un giorno trovai una, una chitarra nella cantina di mio zio. So one day I, I found a guitar in the basement of my uh, uncles. Avevo 12 anni. I was 12. Ed ero un fan degli Iron Maiden. And I was an Iron Maiden fan. Anch'io. <laughs> <laughs> e ho iniziato inizia a suonare la chitarra. Yeah. And I started playing guitar actually to try to e play in, it. Inizialmente, inizialmente volevo fare il chitarrista. And he wanted to be a guitar player first. Poi ho iniziato a scrivere canzoni. Then he started writing songs. Perché litigavo con tutti i membri delle band con cui suonavo. Because of course he was having less call than family rows with all the other band members. E ho iniziato a cantare io. So he started to sing uh, himself. E questa è diventata la mia strada. And so that's how he started. Thank you very much. Now, Nicola, that was a good question. Thank you for this question. <laughs> really? Well, um, to be honest, I don't know um, exactly why. Uh, the, the arena is very small. I mean, in, in TV, Saremo looks quite big, but believe me, the theater is very small and the places are extremely limited. Yeah. So this, I'm impressed. The first time I went to, to, to watch Saremo live when I started working for my company, I said, what? Is this the theater? Because I, I, as, a, as a child, I imagine a, like a huge, a huge venue for Saremo. So this is one issue, the limited number of places. And Saremo is a massive event in Italy. The demand is I incredible. So, but for you sure. You are impressed with the tickets. You should have a look on the hotels. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but for sure, I will pass on to our commercial department the complaints. I know. Well, <laughs> Ok, thank you very much. Fabrizio, Ermal, Italia! Grazie. Thank you.